It's uh, been an interesting build up to this one. It's not usual that we hear twerking and teabagging ahead of a fight. What exactly about this one are you, are you looking forward to? Yeah, I'm looking forward to this fight. Yeah, we're not we're hyping the fight up, but not in the right way. You know, a little um, a little homoerotic, if that's okay to say. But um, I think so. Yeah, we have a similar vibe, similar amount, similar charisma. Um, yeah, you know, I like them, and I think it's to be an interesting fight. When you meant when you said the uh, the quote about oh, I'm going to twerk on him and start a riot, did you anticipate it was going to get quite such a reaction? No, I I say a lot of silly things, and I just, it was with the schmo and you know his stick, and he's pretty. Like I think it relaxed me a little much. I said that, and then it kind of got out of control. And yeah, but you know, it fits me. You know, it's on message. But yeah, I've I've, had, I've talked about twerking a lot in the past few months, mm -hmm. a lot more than I thought I ever would. So that's kind of cool. Have you had to work on it to make sure it's up to standard? I've had to. I've been on several other fighters, like their vlogs, showing them how to twerk. So you know, I've become quite the teacher. Yes. You know, I do think if I do say so myself. So. Yeah, it's a twerking camp for sure. Good stuff. <laughs> twerking aside, when you look at the fight itself, what have you made of Paddy Pimlet in the UFC and, and how do you think you stack up against him? Um, I feel like you separate all the flash from this fight. It's not very interesting at all. I'm not really, I don't follow him on social media and I didn't really know about Paddy until his debut. So I don't think I'm going to be starstruck. I don't really see him as a star. He's just a guy that's 0 2 in the UFC and he fought some guys that had losing records in the UFC. And there's plenty of guys in the roster like that. So I'm just kind of trying to separate this fight from the flash. And, you know, I, on paper, I'm not too interested in this, in this matchup, to be honest. So. What exactly about it are you not interested in? Um, I kind of fought a, a grappler last fight. And they lead to boring fights. And I think I'm a little too smart to make a lot of the mistakes that a lot of his opponents have made. Um, if I take him down, I'm not letting him up. If I hurt him, I'm not going to let off the pressure. Um... And he's not the most accurate striker. He has one real knockout, and he's a regional champ. And I've fought all those things before, so. I hate to put words in your mouth, but you don't sound very impressed by him. No, no, I'm not impressed with a lot of things. I've fought and I've sparred of champions. I've sparred of, like, title contenders. And I've seen everything. I've sparred 20-plus rounds every week for 10 years. And majority of those are just striking rounds. So not even in my wheelhouse. I've never been dropped by anyone near my size. I've never been hurt in any of my fights. The only time I've been cut was my headbutt. So we've done a lot of the similar, same things, me and Patty, but I've done it without taking any damage. No one knows about my chin because I don't get hit. So he's a good fighter, and I really like him, and I think he's very entertaining, and I'm kind of a fan. Like now, I like his interviews and all that, but it's all just, it's just work. So, last one for me, just so we can make sure we still have the headline. The plan is still to knock him out and twerk on him afterwards. Yeah, finish the fight, twerk, go home. Jordan, Jordan. I, oh, oh, go on, go on. Hi, hello. Uh, Patty was saying that he he's going to make you wilt under the pressure, and he predicts a knockout. You were just talking about grappling and how you feel like it could be a boring fight. Do you feel like he's just saying that, or do you see it as a grappling match? Um, I see it. I look at it statistically speaking, and it's probably going to be a grappling match. He has the one knockout, and he was kind of getting pieced up, and he kind of he hit Luigi exiting the clinch, so Luigi, Luigi didn't have his base. I mean, he's not very good on the front foot, so I don't imagine the pressure is going to be an issue um, because no one's wanting to take him down, and I'm a much better grappler than him, I'm a much better wrestler than him. So the idea that he's just going to run and throw punches recklessly, and I'm just going to cover up and get hit with 10 unanswered strikes and fall, I don't think that's going to happen. No, I don't, I don't think he's a threat in the striking department. And you did say uh, that in the beginning when they gave you this matchup, you were a little bit offended. You kind of explained it. Uh, now that you're here in the UK and, and you know, fighting in his home country, how, how's the experience been like and uh, how do you anticipate the crowd's going to be? Um, my first time leaving the country, so that was jarring. I'm terrified of flying, but the panic kind of wears off after six hours. You know, I kind of got tired from being scared. Um, I'm, it's just 20,000 people. The O2's smaller than the Thomas and Mac. I fought from a bigger crowd for my third amateur fight. And I'm, I've dealt with a lot of drunk people. It's just 9 p.m. So how drunk can they be? They'll have to show me. But 
I'm not too, I'm not too worried about it. Social media followers, hometown, that doesn't matter. It's all white noise, a placebo effect. I get to decide if it affects me. And, but there are perks, right? I mean, the fact that he's being pumped up and he's here in his home crowd, uh, do you, do you imagine, or do you allow yourself to think about, you know, stealing all that momentum away from him with a win here? Um, I mean, when I separate from the flash, he doesn't really have momentum, you know, um, <laughs> He beat two guys who aren't even on the roster anymore. So in terms of actually how where my place it is in this division before and after this fight, it's absolutely no different. And I mean, social media followers are cool. I will gain a lot more after I win, but that doesn't matter to me. I never cared about that stuff. All right. Thank you. Jordan. Yes. Hiya. Um, you talk about you fought in front of a big crowd before. But pretty much everybody in that arena is going to be cheering for the guy in the opposite corner to you. How do you mentally prepare for not just the fight, but for the atmosphere that you're going to walk into just when you come out of the tunnel into the arena on fight night, the wall of noise that's going to greet you is going to be something unlike anything you've experienced so far in your UFC career. So how are you mentally preparing for that? Um, a lot of my teammates have been booing while I've been sparring. So if, the, if, the, if those you love can boo you and you could kind of drown it out, I imagine that those I don't even know or will never know. I don't imagine it's going to bug me. Plus, you know, boos have a nice, like, powerful sound. I think it's kind of going to pump me up. I'm kind of excited for the experience. I'll never get it again after this fight. So, You said um, it might not be that interesting a fight because you both have have a strong sort of grappling base. But quite often from watching fights in the past, when you get two grapplers going head to head in the cage, it can sometimes turn into a striking matchup. So break it down for us as a striking matchup based on what you know of Paddy. Paddy's already said he's gonna knock you out inside the first two minutes. He said that in an interview yesterday. So give us your take on that and how you stylistically break it down from a, a striking perspective. Um, striking perspective is like the open stance, south up versus orthodox thing. Can't really throw combos and blitz as well from a mirrored stance. So, I don't think I don't think that's going to be an issue. I don't think he'll be able to rush me effectively. But it's basically my defense versus his offense. But he's not very he's not particularly good on the front foot. He hit Luigi out of the clinch. If you watch his entire career, he's always getting backed up against the fence, chin up high, trying to throw a check like hook, left hook. If he leads just with the left leg, I mean I've seen this all a thousand times before. Um, I think I'm going to slow down the fight. I don't think he'll be able to push the pace on me. I'm not going to wilt under the pressure. Um, yeah, it's just, he's just a left-handed fighter. He just fights all left side, and I can avoid that. I'll, I'll, I'll walk away from it. And last one from me. In terms of the routes to victory, obviously there's many ways to win a fight. What's the most likely path to victory for you on Saturday? Um, I think as long as I have appropriate pressure, um, patience, and positioning. This fight will be pretty easy. I just got to stay on my toes, stay disciplined, and it should be a walk in the park. Jordan, just down to the right here. How are you doing? How was the flight over? You know, it was long, but not as bad as like the, the jet lag. I'm still kind of recovering from that. A little tired. Like, I'd be going to sleep about two hours ago, so trying to get ahead of that's been kind of difficult, but the flight wasn't too bad. The big plane was actually a lot easier than flying to just Texas or Utah, so... Mm. Flight, not too bad. Jet lag, eh. Wait, cut, we'll see. I spoke to you a month ago and you said the, the thing that makes you the most nervous about this fight is everything other than the fight, you know, the build-up or the attention. Is that still the feelings, you know, a few days out now? Yeah. Um, I'm always more worried about things I can't control because fight night. I'm either going to win to be a good memory or you get knocked out and it's no memory. So it's like, it's either nothing or it's good. So I'm not ever really worried about fight night. Like, I've never really been hurt before. Maybe that's why I'm never worried. But, yeah, no. All the other stuff is more exhausting mm. than the fight. It's just 15 minutes, and anyone could be brave for 15 minutes. Mm. So. And you spoke but there about, you know, the world champions you've trained with and sparred, etc. So far in your UFC career, would you say that Paddy's your toughest opponent or not? No, no. I don't think he's my toughest opponent. I think Trey would have worked him, honestly. Um, he's good on the ground, but also he fought in a he fought in a region where no one's a strong grappler. He every time there anyone's ever grappled him first, he loses. Every time someone been, be, takes him past the first round, he almost loses. The people that beat him who are in the UFC have a losing record. The other guy who beat him is in the Bellator, almost lost to a journeyman. 
I think, you look at the people I've lost, the person I've lost, you look at the people he's lost to, no comparison, no comparison whatsoever. So, yeah. <laughs> and when the UFC came to you, um, you told me that you didn't want to come and fight in July, you thought you were going to fight in November, and you certainly didn't want to come to London. Now that you're here, is it obviously an experience that you think, you know, I'm glad that I did take the opportunity? Oh, no, I'm never traveling again. <laughs> um, you know, next time I'm book books for a show, I can't bring my wife and my baby, not going, miss my family. Um, yeah, beautiful town, beautiful town, you know, um, nice, nice environment, but yeah, I... I definitely prefer to fight the Apex, you know, be 10 minutes away from home. Um, but I'm glad I got this off my bucket list. I think London's the perfect place to kind of travel and see. I'm just a small, I'm just a boy from Las Vegas. I've kind of had a very diverse upbringing. I've seen a lot of people from a lot of different cultures. So traveling's never really interested me. But this has been nice. Not too much of a culture shock. Thank you. Um, you just mentioned there about being away from your family. You know, how, how do you feel mentally going into this fight, you know, being away from home, being away from your normal comforts? Um, it's mostly just tedious. I miss my baby. She's 18 months. So every day they're doing something new. You know, like yesterday, she like took off her own shirt for the first time. She didn't like it. And I miss that. So that's kind of that kind of bummed me out a little bit. But I'll see her in four days. And There's a bunch of first. Yeah. And and have you managed to to cross paths with Paddy yet? No, I haven't. I haven't seen him. Um, I crossed paths with Molly and I was like, why is she so weird? I'm like, oh, that's why she's so weird. They're best friends. But um, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen him yet. I guess I'll, I'll be seeing him in a few hours, hopefully. So <laughs> yeah, so you will be facing off with him, you know, later on. What, what are you going to be expecting from him? I'm actually not quite sure what to expect from him. I'm not sure what energy it's, he's going to bring. Um, generally, he's not really talked trash before, but from what I heard, I haven't really seen. Like He's talked a little bit more trash for this fight, but I, I don't know. I don't quite know how to feel about him. I'm not sure if it's like a fight persona thing or if it's really him. A lot of fighters kind of have to hype themselves up and be someone different on fight night and fight week. So I don't know. I'm I'm hoping I get the normal patty. I don't want the whole the whole act, the whole Patty, the Patty show. But we'll see. I'm pretty sure it'll be a little stupid. <laughs> so we'll see. Do you think that is an act? You know, that whole kind of Patty show, the kind of, you know, that kind of vibe that he brings? Yeah, um, I do. I do think it's mostly an act. I'm, I know a lot of fighters. Um, and I've trained with Cowboy for the past like seven, eight years. And he's very nervous before fights. And if he, who has the second most fights in the UFC gets nervous, has all these insecurities. I know everyone else does too. So I'm very suspicious of like blind bravado a lot when I see it from a fighter. I feel like it's usually hiding insecurities. And I just try to like live by like a principle of like radical honesty. Like I'm confident, but I'm never like, oh, 100%, I win this. I, there's no way I don't, lo I don't lose this fight. I try to have a really grounded opinion. So yes, I'm suspicious of his whole, his whole stick. Mm. And, and you know, facing off with a fighter, does that give you insight into maybe what you can expect to see on fight night? Yeah, um, facing off of a fighter, the first time you meet your opponent, if they're not like this abstract idea anymore. Like you actually get to size them up. Oh, yeah, they're human too. They're close to your size. They're this, this, and that. Yeah, I always like to meet my, like, meet my opponents, kind of get to humanize them. So I'm excited. Thank you. Tim from... Sorry. All right. Tim from Sports Geeta here. Uh, just a quick question on how do you handle anxiety going into fights like this? You sound so calm. You sound ready. You're talking about other people before fights. How do you handle anxiety? It's the trauma from growing up. Um, <laughs> yeah, honestly, like fighting's not that scary when you compare it to everything you do on a daily basis. Like I had a higher chance of like getting hurt in the Uber on the way here. Um, have a better chance of getting hurt while sparring. And honestly, sparring a lot of times is a lot harder than a fight because there's no adrenaline when you're sparring on a day-to-day -day basis. All the aches and pains, injuries you feel. But during a fight, you don't feel anything. It's just like that rush and that energy. And that's pretty cool. You never feel that anywhere else. And it's almost all, it's a positive experience. Even when I lost my fight, I had a good day, went on a date with my wife. It's just a fist fight at the end of the day. And yeah, I'm just, I like to do it and I get paid for it, but it's not too big a deal. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Awesome.